Good morning, Willowbrook. This morning, we're going to start in Mark chapter one. So we're kicking off the book of Mark. And there's a couple of interesting things to note about the book of Mark. One is he's very concise. I'm a fan of bullet point information. Sometimes I'm, I just need the information that's necessary. So I'm often a fan of bullet point information. And Mark does this for us. The reason that he does this is because he is primarily speaking to Roman leaders or Gentiles. So he's having to explain Jewish customs. So he's trying to do this without a lot of confusion. And I, I really do appreciate that. I'm also a fan of perspectives. And Mark is bringing us not only this perspective in the gospel that he writes, but he's bringing it in a fashion that's very, very understandable. And he speaks primarily of the actions of Christ more so than the speeches of Christ. You'll find more about what Christ says in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew or his prayer as it's unpacked in John 17. But Mark focuses primarily on the actions of Christ. And in Mark chapter 1, we see a complete picture, not only of who Christ is, but of what he's going to do and the authority that he has. This is very exciting to me. So it starts off with, we're talking about John the Baptist, who's preparing the way for the messenger. And this is affirmed in Christ's baptism, where he affirms John's ministry. And then when Christ is baptized, he he comes up out of the water and the, the dove descends and the voice of God says, this is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. This affirms that this is the messenger of which John the Baptist has been speaking. And so it identifies Christ first and foremost as the son of God and the servant of God, the messenger that is fulfilling the prophecies that they were told. So one of the things I love about this is it, it, there's God's voice saying, this is my son. And there's the dove that represents the Holy Spirit. And then there's Christ. So that's the whole picture there. The chapter goes on to say, once he is identified as God's son and God's servant, he goes on to talk about all the things that he could do, which means he exercised his authority as both of those things. And he exercised authority over demons, over disease, over so many things that it really is a foreshadow of everything that the cross was going to to do everything that was going to happen for all of eternity. He was going to conquer all of these things. So it exercised his authority. So he was first identified and then he had his ministry. But do you know how he had his ministry? He stayed connected to his father. Mark uh, 1 verse 35 says, before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 5 says, the sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. So what I learned from this is we, how does this apply to us? We have to first know that we belong to God and that he is pleased with where we're headed and the ministry that we're in because that is where our power comes from. But it comes because we then in turn go to him in prayer. We say, hey, we need you. We need your understanding of your will and what you have for us. So in order for us to have his power and to walk in the picture that's laid out here in these bullet points that Mark has offered us, Christ said, this is who I am, which is what we need to know. Who are you? Whose are you? That's very important. This is what I do because of who I am and whose I am. But this is how I get it done because I go before him regularly in prayer and I find out what it is that his wisdom has for me to do. So as you go about your day, as you wake up in the morning, spend those minutes with the Lord. Find out what he wants to say to you. Connect to him. Connect to his power. That is the sustaining thing that we have that Christ modeled for us in Mark chapter 1. So Willowbrook, I pray that you find this beneficial. I pray that you find your identity as a child of God. I pray that you find your mission as a servant of God. And I pray that you find your connection as an extension of God through prayer. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day.